All right, guys, welcome to our Thursday night Zoom, or yeah, Thursday night, oh my gosh, Tuesday night Zoom call tonight. <laughs> We're doing this for a lot of the people that can't come on Rachel's Monday night Zoom call, and we are really excited that you guys are all here, and I'm going to start out just tonight by talking a little bit about beauty school, and um, I got to meet Lisa Lombard in person. We are going to be meshing, in a lot of ways, our two teams for trainings and educational purposes for business builders, so I really wanted Lisa to be on. Lisa's an ear. Pennsylvania she has a um, multi-million dollar basically salon that she runs or million dollar salon and so she's a cosmetology um, person as well and that's a great background so her being at um, beauty school this past weekend was really awesome for um, for me to be able to meet her and Anna in person so Anna is uh, also was uh, I think Anna, are you retired or are you still a hairdresser I am a retired hairdresser. You are retired. Okay. So that's awesome. So Anna is retired. And so she um, uh, worked with Lisa as well at a salon. And so we are going to be doing the first thing that we're going to be talking about is in the winter months. So we haven't picked a date yet, but we wanted everybody on the builder team to know that we are going to do a mutual team shared beauty school in Pittsburgh. So Buffy, you didn't hear that yet. So that's a good weekend for Tony to go home. And for you guys to come down because Pittsburgh is halfway between Erie and Pennsylvania is what we decided. So we're going to be doing a beauty school in Pittsburgh, um, kind of like a full overnight getaway experience for moms to experience beauty school. So that will be a pared down beauty school. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what they talked about. Um, and Lisa, whatever I don't share, I want you to jump in. And um, what, basically, it was a two-day event held at this Cook's Castle in Alabama. We and I know you guys saw a lot of my pictures, but the first day we were split into two groups and we were either lavender or pink. And if we were in the one group, we went with Dr. Cole Woolley. And that is one thing you need to know about him is if you had ever heard of Dr. Pappas before, he was um, with Young Living to start and then went over with another oil company. And so Dr. Woolley is now our kind of representative, our science, our main chemist that contracts with Young Living. He hired most of the chemists that still work in the labs at Young Living. Very informative. Anything you can absorb of his, do it. Um, the second uh, thing that we did that he talked about the basic chemistry behind essential oils like monoterpenes, diterpenes, sesquiterpenes, and what they all mean and how they relate to oils. He talked about purity. He talked about Gary and Mary a good bit and, um, you know, their frugal living and how they really live very frugally and how Mary drives a car with no air conditioning and how what the one diamond got up and spoke about how um, they live in an extremely dated, modest house and they are not in this for the money. So you really need to understand. I think that's one thing I really walked away with was that they were very modest people who just love to do the, this business. They love the product that to, they love to create. They love to make new farms, all that kind of stuff. So then the second part was later in the day and we went in with Dr. Luba. I cannot even say her last name. She's from Slovakia. She's like the main like dermatology doctor. She's in charge of Young Living Beauty School. There are three beauty school events throughout the year. This year, the last one will be in Utah on December 2nd and 3rd. I would say that it was worth it enough that I would fly there if I had to do it. If I had not gone to the one in Alabama, I would definitely think it's worth it to fly to the other one. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about events and why they are worth it. So the other thing that we did was we had a hands-on experience. Now, we did, we were able to leave with, that's my dog hitting this door, sorry. But we were able to leave with a full beauty box that contained all the uh, things that we would need to follow the beauty regimen that they talk about. And the main thing that they also talked about is, you know, beauty needs to start from the inside out. That beauty, wow, yes, uh, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we do want to work to make our skin look better. And that is the purpose of beauty school is to work on healthy skin. They wanted, the, I got this from Dr. Woolley. I got this from the, everything I went to is that beauty is truly internal first. Okay. If you're not a beautiful person inside, if you're not loving people, if you're not, you know, an encouraging friend, and if you don't have all those awesome qualities that you need to have to the point that Dr. Woolley even talked about character traits and how Benjamin Franklin worked on a new character trait each month and how we should put up a character trait each month and work on that. That is something that makes us beautiful on the inside. That was that is something that they definitely stand for. Dr. Luba talked about it as well. They also talked about their stance even on cosmetic surgery. How, of course, if somebody has breast cancer and they need reconstructive surgery or there's something dramatic, but breast, but, but Botox and all those things really negate 
the idea of beauty from the inside out and how you should consider yourself beautiful outside and inside okay and so while and to accept the process of aging and to accept the fact that it does happen but yet we don't have to you know do nothing for our faces you know at the same time and so then dr luba you know and this is what we would include a more extensive all-day version of this in a beauty school the only thing that would be different is that we would drop the cost um, for the local one in Chambersburg. Now, we haven't really decided the Pittsburgh one on a cost. Um, Lisa and I haven't talked about that. But I know for our local one that we would like to do one either in the fall or we're going to do one in January or February, and the cost is going to be right around $50. That's going to be for an all-day beauty experience. That's to go through the whole entire line, to have a chance to, like, you would literally be trying everything and washing your face, and we would be walking you through step-by-step. So do know that that's going to happen either in the fall here or the next, like as soon as we have a date for that, there will only be 10 spots for the local Chambersburg one um, to start. And so we're going to be announcing that in the um, regular group here soon, as soon as we have a date picked, probably after this Thursday when we meet, we have a team meeting, then we'll be discussing that. Um, so the other thing I want to talk, um, talk to you about then was the next day they did talk about builders and Aaron Rodgers was a really amazing, amazing um, you know, she's a diamond. She went there within two years. And so, um, like I said, she really emphasized about, even the girl that spoke before her, they all emphasize beauty from the inside out. So that's my recap of beauty school in a nutshell. Do you want to add anything to that, Anna or Lisa, to what I covered? You guys are good? Okay. All right. So that's beauty school in a nutshell. So what we want to talk about tonight are basic builder strategies. And um, if I can teach you nothing else, and this is what we're going to be recording back into um, and sharing with the whole business builders group to watch in a replay. I think the biggest thing that um, I fail forward at and that I really want to teach everybody from the ground up, if you are looking to build with Young, young Living, is to keep it simple. If I can share nothing else with you that um, I've you know regretted not doing more of from the beginning. It's literally teaching a class by taking your kit, paper, and pencil, and that is it. This does not need to be difficult. There do not need to be any other added, nothing else added that you know you need to. The number one rule of sharing young living with people is duplicability. If you want to start a team and you want to grow, and it, and obviously if I'm, I am going to be talking about young living income tonight, so. I do want to reference the income disclosure to you. I'll try to make sure that everybody has a copy. If you don't have that, I'll put a link below this video once I share it in the group. Um, since Young Living does require when we talk about income with them that you have to look, you have to have a link to the disclosure as well. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, as you know, you come into Young Living and you're like, oh my gosh, that is crazy income. That is just absolutely crazy. Like thirty six thousand or thirty five thousand at Diamond is just literally crazy income. How am I going to get there? What's that going to look like? What are what do I need to really move this business along? And so I think it would be foolish to not say that you do need some training to move on in this business. But at the same time, I do want you to understand how ridiculously simple it is. So the main thing that we're going to talk tonight um, about is the Rising Star Bonus. We're going to talk about some resources. This is going to be the first official joined team business builder meeting. So some of this will be a recap for those of you on that are on with me live. And I want you to interject. I want you to share. If there's something you raise your hand to interrupt me, please do that. So, um, but Jen Jordan um, is one of the newest Royal Crown Diamonds. She just got um, her trip to Utah this week. And I watched her at um, My Three Steps to Success at convention. And what she said is, Keep it simple. That was the whole entire half hour presentation was about when you are teaching a class. So when you're sharing oils, how do you start? You start by doing things that are income producing activities. And the number one thing to do that is to teach a class. And we know as business builders, you do not have to follow this formula, but we do know, and like Lisa and I agreed this weekend, this, there is a formula for success with Young Living. There is a formula for success. And so what I want you to do, and I know this is going to sound a little nuts, especially for somebody like Tasha who just got her kit less than a month ago. But what, you, what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking right now like you are a diamond. If you want to do this, and, and listen to me, if you really want to go to the top, I need you to already put yourself in a position where you're a professional at this in your mind and where you may not have all the training under your belt yet, but you can do this. You are already doing this as a business. Hey, Betty. <laughs> Betty's joining in. So again, 
Let's wave at Betty. She's not looking. <laughs> she's, we're all waving and she's not seeing us. Okay, but anyways, so again, I really, really want you to understand that this is truly about sharing with other people and whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in a class, but we do want to teach you the formula for success. The people who have gone to the top quickly, there is a formula for that. And so we're going to be teaching you the series of things of that this evening. So what I want you to do right now is be taking notes. If you're not taking notes, you should be, because if you're not taking notes, you will be, because you're going to be teaching this to your team someday. And that's why every one of you should be taking notes. You're going to need a three ring binder because you're going to be doing a lot of events and a lot of trainings, and you're going to want to take a lot of notes. And uh, all I can tell you more than anything else is um, out of keeping it simple and doing income producing activities, which we will talk about. The third thing is learning teaching, getting your hands on anything you can learn about how to get to the top. And so what we have done is we have done a lot of that research for you already. I did not have this, guys. I did not have this when I started. I had to do this all on my own. So I'm really trying to save you some steps of where to find stuff and all the searching that you need to do. So the first thing that I want to talk about is um, that I gave you some homework in the Purely Oily Business Group. If you didn't see it already, I want you to go like Dr. Woolley's Facebook page. I want you to take a look at Dr. Luba's page. I want you to watch the three videos that I shared. Um, I think I put that in there, the three videos from Young Living with the three main people. Because what you're going to do is when you hit silver, which you're going to be there before you know it, okay, Buffy hit and I hit silver, you know, within a, a year. Lisa's going to be there probably this month, okay? and and we have several people that are ranking up very quickly, you will have access to a um, person from the company. You'll have, like if you're East Coast, there's an East Coast Silver Group and up. You're gonna have access to Alyssa's, Alyssa Francis's oily um, Facebook group for Silvers and up called OF Diamonds, Future Diamonds, OF meaning oily families, Future Diamonds. And you're going to have access to trainings. You're going to have access to trips where you learn. But our job is to get you to silver. Why? Because when you get to silver, your income doubles. You're making a minimum of $1,000 a month. And so what we're trying to do is make that time as short as possible for you. We do not want you to spend very much time between the very start and silver. Because once you get to silver, you have a phone call. You don't even have to call the regular customer service line. There's a silver, there's an executive line you can call. There's a silver line. So once you hit executive, you don't need to call the rest regular customer service line anymore. So please know that we're trying to get you there because once you're at least at executive, you have a number and it's silver, you have access to a lot of training and a lot of tools. So we're going to talk about the basics of how to get to silver tonight. Number one, keep it simple. All right. How do you teach the class? Your kit, paper, and pencil. That's it, okay? You need to know how to enroll people. You need to know how to do your virtual office. You need to follow up with people after they get their kit. And you need to teach them how to get on ER. Those are the steps. And that's part of Monique McLean's Circle of Success book. If you do not have this book, I will lend it to you or I can ship you one and you can ship it back to me. Um, if you want to buy it from me, I will ship it to you. You can PayPal me. You can just send me a snail mail check. It doesn't matter. And when she talks about, I'm going to briefly go over the six steps that she talks about in here. Number one, share. We already talked about that by having classes, by doing one on one on ones where you meet one person at your house, their house, Panera Bread, wherever. Number two, let them try and buy. Try before they buy, giving them a sample of something. Buffy, can you quickly talk about the samples that we've given out that have been successful? Do you mind? Nope. <laughs> um, gosh, we give out lemongrass. If anybody talks about any kind of pain, nerve pain, um, we give people, um, I've given people, you know, half empty bottles of deep relief. Um, I've given out a lot of digies. I di digize is one that I give out frequently. Um, tonight I made uh, a happy heads, head lice <laughs> prevention spray. <laughs> um, I've given out allergy balm. Um, I've given out, um, gosh, peppermint. Okay. And what does every person get that comes to a class? Every person that comes to a class gets their very own <laughs> empty, not empty, bottle, a spray bottle that we buy at the dollar store or Walmart for a dollar, and we put two capfuls of the Thieves Cleaner in, and we give it to them like that with um, a sticker on it and a little, a little label that goes with it that tells what they could use it for, what it is, what they could use it for, and um, then they just have to go home and fill it up, and 
Everybody loves that. Mm -hmm. And that is a really, really inexpensive thing. I go and I buy 10, 20 of them at a time. And then I fill them up, have them ready to go. We carry them around in a box. And then if somebody says, hey, I'm interested in something and you talk, you talk to them about it, you can give them the thieves cleaner. And everybody that comes to a class, they leave with um, a bottle of um, cleaner. And that's, that's really, they're like shocked when they get that. Yes. And it costs about a dollar fifty or dollar sixty to do that. And so I'm sure it's like that much, but the bottle's like a dollar. Right. And then whatever the capsules are. Right. Now, Buffy's skill, and I'm going to talk about everyone's giftings. Buffy's gifting is enrolling. She enrolled 60 people personally in the last year. So that's something that she has done very well, where she's able to, you know, talk to somebody and, and, and motivate them to get a kit. She can do it much better than I can. She doesn't even give them bonuses back. You know, and I have done a lot of incentivizing. So that's definitely her skill. So I want you to have a face of a name. If you need help with enrolling, that is who you're going to go to. Okay. So every person that watches this video has a different gifting and that's what we're going to talk about. And so I think that's definitely one of her main gifts. And so if you have questions about that, that's who I want you to talk to. Okay. <laughs> so don't, and I think that, um, so trying before we buy again, giving a sample of a roll on, giving them a thieves cleaner, giving them something to try. And then the next thing is become a member. So obviously you have to have knowledge of your own virtual office to help them be able to be, all they have to do is go to youngliving.com, become a member at the top, you give them their number and they become a member. It's not difficult, really. That is something that even a brand new member could do. Tasha's had her kit for a month and all she would have to say to people, as long as she has her member number, she could just tell people, go to youngliving.com, go up to become a member, put my number in, select what the kit you want, boom, you're done. Now, I know it isn't quite that simple, but it is very simple, okay? Just as long as it's a member number. Step four, fall in love. You have to fall in love with the product. You have to give people a chance to try Young Living products. That what's, that's what makes us different from any other company out there, okay? It takes some time for people to try. But Brenda Thomas, who's not on this call, she um, was at my sister's yoga birthday party. She got my card. She called, emailed me the next day, called me the day after that, and came over and, and like, got some samples. A week later, she bought her kit. So it doesn't always have to be fall in love real long. Okay, don't think that it's once a month, but for some people it is. And then the last step five is enroll in ER, show them how to get on the auto ship program, and number six is join the team, how to do it as a business. So that's Monique McLean's circle of success, and that's something that's been very beneficial. I also have some Let's Talk, Talk Comp Plan um, books. If you're unfamiliar with how the comp plan works, we can walk you through that. The next book, and this is the other thing, is Lisa has invited us um, as a team to take part in her team's book study each month. So this coming month for October, that we're going to do How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. They just already did GoPro. Um, that's another book by Eric Worre on how to have a network marketing business and be a professional at it because here's the deal. And Tasha, I think at some point um, down the road, we'll have you talk about being a realtor because I think a lot of things about network marketing are similar to being a realtor, the way you get started. It's like, you know, you're kind of like out there on your own and you're not really always sure what you're doing exactly yet, but you have some trainings and a lot of it's a self-paced business, but it's the same exact principle where you are, you know, reaching out to people and you're like, you're a professional. So I think a lot of times you can have somebody that's a realtor, that's a professional that may have only sold a few houses because they've got the training, they've got the knowledge, but maybe they haven't actually put that into practice yet. And so I think a lot of times with Young, with young Living, it's backwards. People don't think of themselves as a professional. They don't think of themselves as a professional first. And then the next one is The Four-Year Career, and that is another book that you need to have. And then I do have this Driven to Success comp plan book. If you need a little bit more in-depth training on the comp plan, we can do that. So please join Lisa's Facebook group. Um, that is just for the book studies for us to converse on the books, talk about what we're learning, that kind of thing. So those are some of the basics to get started. I do love Failing Forward by John Maxwell. That's my all-time favorite book that I think everybody should read outside of the books that I already shared with you. The next thing that I want everyone to do is watch Adam Green's duplication video. If you have not watched Adam Green's duplication video and the whole series where he's with the girl named Sonia, I cannot think of her last name. Um, I just added those videos to the um, uh, list of things I'm purely oily on that pinned post. And if you have not watched that, the whole video series by Adam Green, there are three listed there. Please watch all three of those. The next step would be how to get to diamond and still fail at this business, which I just included as well tonight. So these are just some basic videos. 
outside of the comp plan and some of these things we've already shared with you. So this is going to give you a good start, but what are income producing activities? What should you be doing to get started? If we're gonna keep this simple, sure, you can do all these things, right? But outside of knowing your member number and enrolling people, how do you keep this simple? Okay, how do you duplicate? And the biggest thing is doing income producing activities. Some of you, like me, Buffy, Tasha, I know Hope, I think we all do, um, other than Anna who's retired, most of us work a full-time business. So if I'm going to really focus on making this business work quickly, what do I need to be doing? I need to be doing income <clears throat> activities. And those in this business are getting something on your calendar, a one-on-one, -on -one, a class, a follow-up visit from somebody that just got their kit, an ER visit, and maybe for you, it's somebody gets their kit, you meet with them in two weeks, and then you meet with them two weeks later to go over their virtual office. Because Tasha and I just had her two week follow up, like less than two weeks ago. And all we did were do some, we made some roll ons, we talked about some things she could make. We didn't get into her virtual office. We didn't talk about how to get on a Century Awards much. I don't think we did. So that's the thing. You might need to have two follow ups with somebody to really help them understand their virtual office and all those things. So then the next thing is to get on ER. And so once you're doing those things and teaching people how to do those things, then the next step is to teach them how to do it as a business. And that's 80-20. 80% 80 of your time is enrolling new people, 20% of your time is on leadership, and until you're to executive or senior star, I mean, you probably don't have to worry too much about that. So tonight we're gonna take a couple minutes, and I'm gonna screen share, and we're gonna talk about rising star bonus. We um, did an uh, overview, Aaron Rodgers did an overview in that video of this this weekend. We're gonna do it with you here again. I'm gonna screen share with you and talk about why this sets you up for a good team and also your options as to why you may not wanna do that, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and let me go to share screen. So can everybody, Buffy, give me a thumbs up because I can only see you and Anna. Do you see my screen now? Everybody sees that? Okay, all right. So. What is the rising star team pool bonus? This is only for the first 24 months that you're in the business that you're in with Young Living. You can only do this for 24 months. The other thing is that this is only for people up to executive. Once you get to silver, this will no longer benefit you, all right? So when you're looking at the income disclosure, I did this, um, I went to my upline a year ago, Rachel Holland, I prayed with her, I said, look, all I need to do is make an extra thousand dollars a month and my husband can quit his job. That's all I need. And so she prayed with me and all I focused on was getting to silver. So I got to silver and sure enough, I was, I had an income of over a thousand dollars a month, but then especially when I moved up and uh, had now two major legs, I literally had to start four new legs. So that means that it's going to take me a lot longer now to get the people started to get to uh, diamond like platinum gold platinum diamond okay so let's take a look at this and see why this is different what they're saying on the left in the yellow so you are the star you are and this is if you are on a hundred PV a century words auto ship order every month okay that's the first requirement you need to build number three says you have to build seven qualified legs with any combination of the following three legs of 300 OGV so like take a look at the yellow you start out with three people, they are all on 100 PV on ER. They're spending a minimum of 100 PV on ER every month, and let's pretend like they have um, 3,000 under each of those legs, or I'm sorry, 300 under each of those, so leg one, leg two, and leg three, their OGV is 300. So at that point, you've got, maybe they've enrolled some people, or maybe they're each just spending 300 a month on their own, but you've spent 100, they've each spent, and their team OGV is 300 each, so between your 100 and their 300 apiece, your total OGV is 1,000, okay? Doesn't matter how they get to their 300, it can be all by them, it can be some people under them, whatever. So that's the yellow component. And then um, the next orange section there, all right, you're gonna have two people on ER, and their team OGV is gonna be 500. And then, so the one and the yellow, you get a one share $50 extra bonus a month. For the, for the orange, you're gonna get two shares, which is $100. The $250 makes $100. So if you get to orange, you've already got your yellow established, now you've got your orange going, 
you will get $150 extra on your paycheck on top of your commission every month. And then the last two, and Hope, this is exactly what I've been talking to you about in terms of getting your seven started. So Hope, I've tried to start Hope's team out this way as best I can. Um, so the last thing you would do is you would have two 100 PVER people who have $1,000 um, in their OGV, like six and seven, and you're getting three shares just for that. So three, four, five, a total of six possible total shares, a possible total of $300 extra on your paycheck. So the thing is, you've set yourself up to go to Royal Crown Diamond because at Royal Crown Diamond, you only need seven total legs. You need six legs doing 35,000. You need an extra leg doing 1,000. That's called PGB. And so this whole Rising Star bonus is so that you can establish, so you can really get your seven legs established to go to the very top. And this is what she te Aaron teaches her team. So when we go into, and I'm going to use my mom as an example here, when we go into my mom's virtual office, okay, she's hit executive a couple times. She mostly sticks around seeing your star, but I'm going to sign in for her and show you what does it look like. Um, hang on a second. I think that's her number. Let's hope. Okay, yeah, we're good. So let's go to rank qualification. And so right now she's already hit senior star for the month. And this in your dashboard where it says rank qualification is where you're gonna go in and look to see, okay, where am I here? So when you've done rising star bonus and you've set yourself up for seven, and let me come back and explain PGV to you. Once you hit silver, okay, you have to have a thousand dollars. It doesn't come from these two four thousand dollar legs. So, like any all the way through any level, you have to spend a hundred PV to be considered those levels. So, at star, you spend a hundred. Your team does four hundred for a total of five hundred OGV. That's star. Senior star, you do a hundred. Your team does two thousand OGV. Um, so nineteen hundred plus your one hundred is a total of two thousand. But then when you get to executive, you got to have these two one thousand dollar legs. And that means you might have seven people on your front line, but out of those seven people, two of them have to be building teams that are doing $1,000 in volume or OGV. So you can have 5,000 OGV, but if you only have one leg that's doing 4,500 of it, you're not going to get executive because you have to have two $1,000 legs. And then at silver, you do 10,000, but you have two $4,000 legs but you have to have a thousand not coming from those legs. So for example, I hit, so I hit 10,000 a couple times, but I didn't have enough for 4,000 on each leg, or you might have 10,000 where you have two $5,000 legs, but a thousand of it cannot come from those legs. So you have to be building that third leg all ready to go to gold. And then at gold, you have three $6,000 legs, and a total of $35,000 OGV with 1,000 outside of those three legs getting ready for your fourth leg. And then platinum, you have four $8,000 legs with a fifth leg started all the way up. Even when you get to the very top, you have six $35,000 legs, one and a half million OGV, and 1,000 cannot come from those six legs. So you basically have six golds underneath of you at that point because $35,000 is what you need over here to get to gold. So you have six golds underneath of you and one baby leg doing $1,000. But when you go back to that rising star team bonus pool, they are trying to get you set up with seven builders underneath of you to get you to the top of the company. I was so focused on silver that I did not do this. And then when I moved up, or I did do this, but then when I moved up, because my situation's a little weird because I moved into a position ahead of me, that a girl gave up and that doesn't normally happen. So just don't plan on that. But I'm saying when I did move up though, then I went back to two legs and now I am building out four legs. Sure. It increased my OGV, but it didn't help me when it came to my legs. So right now I am hauling rear end to get my other legs going where they need to be. And it's happening. It's happening. It just takes time. So that is why rising star bonus sets you up to get to the very top. So what I would do if it were me is I would do, I would write down the names of seven people I totally want to do life with. If I were to go to the top of this company, who are the people that I want to do life with? Who are these people that are going to be my main front 
team frontline people. And those are the people that you're going to be really spending a lot of time with, training a lot. They're going to be part of your life big time. So you better not be asking people you don't like to be on that position. <laughs> so I think, um, I think that's um, really important when you're starting out is to look at, and I know some of it is for some people, who can I just get on my team? Who can I get on my team? You know, and sometimes you can't control necessarily, um, you know, sorry, I want to stop the share. Sometimes you can't control who's on your front line. Sometimes it's just whoever comes on board. Like with me, I have a blog. And so I was enrolling some people that, you know, but my front line, I made sure were people that, I mean, and I am doing that now with my other, you know, uh, five legs is I am making sure that they are people that I want to do life with. Okay, so that's very extremely important to be strategic about that. So I really want to make sure that everybody understands how to get a good start. And, and the other thing I really want to do to motivate you and or to inspire you, I should say, is, you know, just keep it simple, but you need to believe that you can do this. If you do not have the faith to believe this, you are not going to you're not going you're going to self destruct a little bit in this business and you can't do that. How I mean. I, I want to pray at the end of this video and if you don't pray if you're somebody that doesn't pray you are more than welcome to get off the call and um, and I will you know even leave that in the recorded part but I think for me I had to wait 17 or at first I had to wait eight years to become a mom with my son so it was a long time you know at, before I was able to be a mom I had to wait and wait and wait and wait and then I had to do a lot of paperwork and then I wasn't sure if I was gonna travel to Guatemala and then I had to do this and then I had to do that and I finally, finally became a mom. And then the Lord put it on my heart that I didn't really feel I was supposed to have a pregnancy. And that's not for everybody. I have lots of friends who've adopted and boom, they were done and no problem. But for me, I had this urgent calling on my life. I felt to have another child and I had to wait a total of 17 years to have that pregnancy. I do not quit or give up. That is not even in my vocabulary. That is not, e I, I know how to wait well. If you do not know how to wait, come talk to me. Okay. Um, we all have stories. I'm sure Buffy has stories that she could share. I'm sure Lisa does too, but there are times in my life where I've had to wait. I, you do not quit. You do not give up. And if the Lord's really calling you to something, then it's, e it's easy in many ways. I mean, it's work. It's hard work. It's not ditch digging work, right? I mean, this is hard work, but I'm not out digging a ditch. I'm not out, you know, I'm busy. That's really the hard work is that you're busy. You're busy doing all this all the time. So I don't want to see, I don't want to hear one word from anybody about quitting or giving up until they get to silver, right? And the first thing that people, that enemy, the enemy is going to put in your mind is, well, I'm helping them make an income. Um, that in, in many sense is true, but that's actually not true. This is your business. Do you want a chance to make that kind of income for yourself? Then get away from that negative. Always, and Lisa had a great term, edify, your, edify the team above you as much as you can. Encourage them. Um, really just work on praising them, making sure that you are edifying. Do not come against your leadership. Don't be negative to your upline. Don't talk about them negatively to your downline. Be encouraging. Be an encourager to them. And Lisa said that this weekend, and I really feel that's extremely important that you edify and encourage your team leadership. Because we, it, just as, you know, I don't know, many of you, but like with me in the church, you need to edify your leadership. It's the same thing in your young living business. So really encouraging and praising your upline, even when they fall and even when they fail. They're going to fail. I am going to fail. Lisa's going to fail. Buffy's going to fail. Every, Anna's going to, we're all going to fail. Okay. And all, and all I can say is the more you talk positively about your boss at, at work and your boss with us and your boss, you know, and we're not your boss. We're your mentors. But what I'm saying is the more that you can edify the people above you, that will come back to you full measure. And I know this firsthand because I had a really bad boss before I had the boss I have now. So we are your mentors. We are your leaders. We're here to help you. This is our business, but it's also your business. So we all have to work as a team. It's not about you making any money. It's like this. If we're not like this. We're not going to go to the top together. And that's what we want. We want everyone to walk in love, get along together, go to the top together, and really, really, really make a team effort to push this thing to the top together. And that is the only way that we're gonna survive at this. It isn't about, I can't do this without you, you can't do this without me, we can't do this without the sixth generation, the sixth generation can't do it without us. We have to be solid on this. 
So that's extremely, extremely important. Something that Lisa and I talked about that I really want to share. Um, you know, we're all kind of, and the other thing is don't dabble. Don't dabble in this business. Do it. Don't say, oh, um, and I dabbled for about a year. It was the biggest mistake I ever made. Don't dabble. Just get started. Get rolling. Get your team built. Be dedicated. Take it seriously. Be professional at it, and you will get there. Okay, that's what I want to assure you. So if you keep this simple and you duplicate and you just don't quit or do, do, don't, yeah, exactly, Lisa, don't treat it like a hobby. Treat it like your business. You're only going to go to the top when you've got it right here that you're going to go to the top, and that's the only way to do it. So I think, I think that once you get these things, you know, kind of in your mind and you do some of the trainings and you're simplifying and you're duplicating, it all comes together naturally. So is there anything for somebody just getting started that anybody wants to add or do you have any questions about, especially like Tasha, you're really just getting started. I would love to hear your perspective as to what you are thinking from your end. <coughs> You know, you're hit, you're touching base on a lot of things that we say in real estate all the time. Don't treat it like a hobby, treat it like a business. If you want a hobby, right. go get a hobby. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, real estate is an extremely expensive hobby if that's what you're trying to do. <laughs> uh, but it's the same concept. You know, you have to, you have to really work it, know it, fake it before you make it. It's the same concept there. Like I, I may not know everything, but I just had that, that session with Holly yesterday mm -hmm. and it was, it was amazing. You know, just being able to touch base with her and seeing what her needs are and just seeing everything that how the business is actually working. And it's important to me for it to, to really to come across that I'm, I'm professional with it. You know, yes, we were, be able to, we were able to sit around her kitchen table and be very casual, but she would ask me questions and I was able to answer them to the best right. of my, my ability. So and it's definitely something to to to. I definitely need more more information for sure. Okay, so there's somebody fresh out of the gate. Just so I think that's one example. Then you've got somebody like me who had her kit for a year, who knew a lot about oils and just started teaching. You know that that's a, showing you the difference of why you don't have to wait. Tasha's not waiting. You don't have to wait to get started. Um, I do think that you know um, I think sometimes people who are just getting started may be a little scared, and that's normal. But I think the more you can encourage them to get out and start having sharing sessions, and I think it's perfectly fine for Tasha to say, I don't really know that answer yet, but let me look that up. And Adam Green talks about that in his duplication video. He said he would be at a class and people would ask him a question. And he'd go, I don't know, let me look that up, even though he totally knew the answer because he wanted to show that he was not an expert. You do not need to be an expert to duplicate your team. Right. So right now... You just, have to, you just have to start sharing and sharing and sharing and giving samples and letting them try and sharing more. But I want to go back really briefly to the rising star bonus and why when you have the theoretical, and this is what I taught Hope, the theoretical thing about those seven frontline people is that you would normally, you would teach a class for them, you would teach a class with them, and then you, they teach the class and you're there to answer questions. So theoretically, on that family tree, you are going to, um, you know, have those seven builders started. And then you're, and that is where I think I'm going to use hope. I'm going to use you for an example. She has her seven builder. She has seven people. I think you have seven on ER, don't you, on your front line? She has seven people on ER, six or seven. And so she, but they aren't all necessarily really great builders yet. Some of them aren't building at all. Some of them are starting to build. And so what she's had to realize is that she may need to do more than the three classes with some of them some of them we've done three classes and they're already moving and they've already got a team started and yada 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 but then it's not it's not impossible for her to have to go into her downline don't if you want to really get this done quickly and don't wait on your downline don't wait on the people below you to all do all the work I'm not saying you do all the work but like hope might need to like we talked this past week about she may need to go into her second or third generation call those people and say are you open to having a class are you open to having a class? So like I'm thinking of Betty as a good example, who's just not enrolled all these 10 people. Sure, do that model of three, you know, three classes with them. But if they're not ready or something's not moving in the pace that she wants, she can go into that downline and maybe do what she can do. So like say, hey, and I'll incentivize. Like I don't know if you guys saw my Facebook page. I need more frontline team people in my second generation. 
because I want to help out some of my new builders and I am offering a free diffuser. So that, you don't always have to incentivize, but incentivizing, you have to ask yourself, what do I want people to be doing? I want them to get a kit. I want them to get on ER and I want some of them to start it as a business. And so you choose how and if you want to incentivize to do that. But I, Buffy doesn't, she hardly incentivizes at all. I incentivize a lot. That's really a matter of preference and how fast you want to grow. So for me, I'm like, I don't have time. I got to go, 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 go. So I choose to do more incentivizing than others where she's got the ability to somehow get the, all these people to sign up and then not incentivize them. So again, um, that's entirely up to you. So anything else, uh, Lisa, I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of stuff for, for newer people, but I feel like we have a ton of stars that need to get to senior star and executive. That's my goal is to move all these people. We've got probably 20 to 25 stars on my team that I need to move to uh, senior star executive. And I want to get as many people to silver in the next year as possible. That's my goal is to move all of you to silver. Everybody watching this now, everybody watching it by being a replay um, is I think that most teams catapult to the top when we have that resource of being able to go in the silver groups and have the, you know, the experience. So other than what I've taught you tonight, the next piece of advice I could give you is get to convention, get to beauty school, get to an Ignite event, get to an event, go to your local events. If your uplines are having local events, get to those, invite people to those, invite, 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 invite. That's the purpose of those events. So like this Saturday, I have a rally event in my local area. Get as many people to that to get enrolled with you as you can. Sunday, we have a, an event at a local, um, at Buffy's Moms this week for chest congestion rub. Get as many people as you can to that event. The sooner you get people to those events, you go yourself and model it, and then get people to the, come to those events, the sooner you will grow, okay? So I really do believe that is the key behind being at Simple and Duplication. Hey, Steph. Go ahead and jump in there. I just want to add something to that duplication. I think it's really important as we're teaching our teams about duplication, to have the understanding that people will do what you what you what they see, they will not do what you say. Right. So duplication isn't about telling people what to do; it is about allowing them to see you doing all the things. Modeled behavior is what is going to be duplicated. So if you're talking about attending an event, or you want your people to be attending events, but you're not attending events, your people are not going to attend events. So whatever you want your team to do, be the type of be the type of business builder that you want to get on your team. And I think that that is, if you live that out every day, that is how you're going to go, you know, silver and six and that Elite Express program. I mean, that's completely doable, but it has to be done all the time. Can you give some examples of how you stay organized with three kids and working full time and doing that? What are some things you do and still are able to do all this stuff? Um, so every either Sunday night or Monday morning, I actually, Monday, I don't work on Mondays. Um, you know, the kids are usually at school, my husband's at work. So for me, it's like, a, I can quiet my mind on Mondays. Um, it's probably my most productive day of the week as far, but it is a lot of busy work. That is when I prepare all my welcome packages. That is when I um, do my bloom packages. That is when I follow up with people. That is when I plan out my posts. That is when I do my research. But one of the biggest things is you can either plan to succeed or you can plan to fail. So having a plan is huge. So I typically create a to-do list. I plan out in my planner a couple weeks ahead of time, but I mainly do that on Monday mornings. I plan it all out. And then it's about working the plan that you make. Um, but you know, there's 168 hours a, a week and I talk about this all the time. I talk about it to my staff and I talk about it to people on my team. Mm -hmm. I'm busy is a complete excuse. And an excuse is a reason that you have wrapped in a lie that you either believe or you want other people to believe. But busy, I mean, everybody's busy. People can be busy watching 40 hours a week of TV. Mm -hmm. People do with their, with their time and their money what they want to do. You can either make excuses or you can take action. I mean, that, that's really, and I know that, that might seem strong, but that is the truth. So 
I think it's about hunger. You know, how bad do you want it? Because I'm busy. Right. I'm really busy. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, like you said, I have three children. I run a million dollar a year salon. I have a husband who is a sales and finance manager in the auto industry. So not that he doesn't help out when he can, but we can't really rely on him to do anything. He doesn't, I mean, he was supposed to be done with work today at six. He just walked in the door, I don't know, a half hour ago. I mean, that's just, so we can't count on him to pick up from soccer practice or anything like that. So really I take full, you know, a hundred percent responsibility of really kind of running the household. So everybody's busy. Okay. It's about priorities. I agree with you on that. And I think staying organized with a paper planner, turning off your Facebook notifications while you're working are two other great tips. If you I can just, you know, work around. I know like, for example, like um, I'm going to pick on Hope again. She's a school nurse at one of my schools. And I know like she watches a lot of the videos when the kids in between kids coming into her office and when she's not busy in her downtime and her lunch break, I mean, she's always watching, you know, things and getting stuff done in those times. I'm doing it on lunch break. I'm doing it in between students. I'm doing it after school. We just filled 50 sample bottles of thieves cleaner to ship out to blog readers and in, in the half hour before I got on this call. So the other thing I need to stress to you is that there are times of busyness. Like Rachel Holland said, when she got to like on the way to gold from like from right before gold to platinum, it was the most insane time she ever had in the business. I, and so for me, mine was when I was executive and I taught 10 classes, 12 classes, 10 classes in three months, hit silver in three months, and then backed off for a little bit. So I think there are times where you're just killing it, killing it, killing it, and then back off, and then kill it, kill it, kill it, and then back off. So there are times where you're gonna be more busy. Like Hope's pregnant with her third baby. She can be killing it now, but we know she isn't gonna be killing it the month that she gives, you know, <laughs> she can still kill it around the month in delivery, but you know what I'm saying? There might be a season where she has to back off a little bit. So the thing is, when you've got the time to commit to it, do it. And then when you don't, you don't, you back off. And so, you know, I think that, you know, not, I'm not saying back off and, and hobby it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are times you're going to put the pedal really to the floor and then you're going to lift up a little bit and then you're going to put it to the floor, but you never take your foot off the pedal. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. You're never going to take your foot off that pedal of building your young living business. So these are just some tips and strategies. I will be gold within the next six months. If that does not happen, then you hold my feet to the fire, okay? But I'm telling you right now, my plan is to be gold in six months and diamond in two years at the very most, okay? That's my goal. So I'm putting it out there. I'm not afraid to, I mean, if I fail at it, okay, then I fail at it, but I'm at least going to state it out loud. I'm driving back from beauty school, and it was the first time that I really I don't know if I can explain this without sounding like a little crazy to all of you, but I was literally cussing at the enemy. I was in the car. I'm driving the RV down the highway in Alabama and I'm going devil. I am. I don't care what you say. I am going. I, I was like in my head. I'm really thinking like, forget you comp plan. I'm going to, I'm going to be at the top. I'm going to be at the top of this company. I don't care what you say. I don't care that there's only 27 Royal crown diamonds. I'm going to the top. Oh yes. I'm, I, and I'm like driving, saying this stuff out loud. And my husband comes out and he goes, and he goes, <laughs> looks at me like, are you all right? And I'm like, no, I'm just telling the enemy how it's going to be. So just back away. You go back and lay down with the kids. I'm just going to tell you right now, this is where I'm headed. I am going to the top. I don't care. I don't care what you have. To, I refuse to believe anything else. I, you know, and I speak it out loud. You have to speak it out loud. So I want everyone, the last thing we're going to do before we head off this call, and it's almost eight o'clock and I feel like we've gone over a lot, is we're going to pray. And I want you to get your favorite oil and we're going to oil and we're going to pray and we're going to say it out loud. I know. Is that crazy or what? I know it's crazy, but we're going to do it. So get your oil. I'm going to go grab mine. Mm. I got my best kept secret. Which I'm, I, I have, I, I'm telling you what I got right now. Don't tell anybody because it's the last couple drops when I had the original piece in common. <gasps> oh yeah, girl. Oh, Valor, girl. Oh, girl. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you, okay. got, you got me beat. I mean, that's like, how can you tell? I just looked in and I only have all Valor twos. So, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So what I want you to do is grab your oil. Hopefully you have it. I want you to oil up. Oh man, it's almost empty. Oh my gosh, I think it is empty. almost empty. Well, I'm going to have to open the top there. I got enough out. Steph, I just want to say two things. Real, super duper. Yeah, go ahead. 
Um, one, all I can picture right now is, did you see War Room? No, I did not. <laughs> you have to see it. Okay, it's really? so good. But like, she tells the devil off. She rebukes him. <laughs> she like goes in, slams the door, and she comes back out again. She's like, and another thing. That's what you just reminded me of. But anyway, the other thing I want to say is, I, I don't know Hope. I've never met her. So congratulations on baby number three. We have <laughs> I'll put you over the top. Um, <laughs> That's I told her she's going to be silver so she doesn't have to be the school nurse anymore. That's what she's yeah. going for. So take care of oil. Breathe it in. I put mine in my hair. I put it on my chest. Mm, and I want each of you to unmute at one point, and I want you to tell me where you're going to be. I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to be I'm going to be gold in six months. I'm going to be diamond in two years at the most. At the most, okay? Lisa, you're next. Go ahead. Um, silver this month, gold in three, and diamond by end of 2017. All right. You got this. You got this, girl. Tasha, you're new. Come on, girl. <laughs> I want silver in six and diamond within two years. Hey, amen. Amen. All right. Who's next? Anna? <laughs> silver in six and diamond in two. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. You can do that. Hope you got one. <laughs> I'm driving so quick. Um, I'll say silver in, I'm just going to go eight months with the baby coming. Okay. That's realistic. That's realistic. What, diamond two, girl. When are you going to be diamond? Come on now. Oh, let's say two years. All right. Okay. Betty, can you, you want to do next? You're next. Uh, I'm going to be gold by convention next year and diamond in two years. Okay. I want all of you to try to get to convention. <laughs> you want to get, and we're going to do this. Okay. So let I'm me going to, I'm going to go to convention for sure. I want to go. Okay. Yay. So is, Yay! um, Stella <laughs> is going to convention. I know Buffy's pretty sure she's going to convention. Um, at Anna, you're going to, I know that. Anna and, and I are going. Okay. We are going to have a team dinner. Um, if I, I'm just going to just, I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to go out on a limb because I'm not telling any of my family too much of this. Eventually they'll know. But, um, but we are praying about trying one more time. If you don't know, we had a failed um, embryo transfer last month. But um, we are going to try probably one more time. And, and Hope didn't even know that yet. I didn't tell her that yet. <laughs> so, because that was just this week. I knew that. <laughs> so we are going to, um, if I am delivering around that time, that would be the only reason I won't be there, but Adam will be there. So it just would be depending on how close to delivery at that point. But definitely, if this next one doesn't work and I'm not pregnant in the summer, hands down, I'll be there. Okay? So I already bought my tickets. I mean, I, have, I already have tickets. So there you go. So let me pray with you guys um, and just, and then we'll head off. I know it's been an hour. So thank you for hanging with me for a whole hour. Okay. Lord, I come before you and I thank you, Lord, so much for these ladies. I know some of them may not even believe in you and that's fine. Lord, I just know that you are a God of amazing things, Lord. You are a God of, um, Lord, if I believe that you were raised from the dead for my sins, that I can believe that I can make, then this making it up to the top in this company is nothing. That is nothing. If that is your plan for, for all of us to go to the top, Lord, then I know that that is so easy compared to, I remember saying to you, Lord, how am I ever going to have a pregnancy? How am I ever going to have a pregnancy? Not, you know, being afraid and not and fearing and not believing. And Lord, had I kept thinking those thoughts and not press forward, Lord, I wouldn't have my little boy in there. I wouldn't have either of my little boys in there. And so Lord, we come before you, God, you are a God of miracles. And I'm going to be the prayer of the persistent widow for my team. Lord, I pray in Jesus name that every lady on this call watching it by replay or watching it live now, Father God, will go to diamond or above. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that everybody here will go to diamond or above. You know, because you know what, God? I, I love to ask you for big things. You can do the impossible. And in Lord, even if tomorrow we all die and we know that that is, that is possible to happen at any time, that is fine. I'll still lay down my crown. And I tell you all the time, Lord, when I get your royal crown diamond, I'm just going to lay it at your feet anyways. 
So I pray, Father, for each of these ladies here that our work would not be in vain, that we would have the right perspective as we move forward in our ranks, that we would be open. Lord, I pray for our future team members. I pray for our future builders. I pray for the ladies on this call that are watching it by replay too. Father, bless their finances. Bless their spiritual lives. Bless their emotions. Bless their physical health for them and their entire family. Father God, because if all this is about making money, it's wasted time. But really, Lord, it's about relationships. It's about encouraging each other. And Lord, I pray that, you know, just like meeting Lisa in person this weekend and Anna, Father God, that was just such an amazing time of fellowship, encouragement, training, edification. And that's what we're all about, Lord. This team is going to go to the top, not because we want to make money, but because we love you and we're going to encourage each other. So Father, I just praise you and thank you for all the wonderful things you are doing, Lord. We lift up our nation. We lift up all the politics. We lift up who the future of this nation is. We lift all that up to you, Lord. And most specifically, Lord, we come before you and we praise you, God. I praise you for all the things you've done in my life. I praise you for all the things you're going to do in these ladies' lives and in my own life. And Lord, you are to be glorified at all times. And we thank you for that. Not that we are worthy, Father God, but in your name, amen. Amen. All right. If we don't go to the top after that, I don't know what going to I just don't have anything else to say. So, <laughs> so I hope that. Uh, as we work through our goals, if you want to, you know, you're going to, work to reach those goals, if you need help goal setting, reach out to Lisa or Buffy or I. Make sure that you, if your goal is to be here in a year, what do I got to do to get there? You have to want it. I want you to want it. What do you, what is your, you know, what is your why? Why do you want to get there? And just get there. Don't wait. Don't look back. Just go and pray about it. And if the Lord opens the door and so, if the Lord gives you the green light, don't hesitate. Don't stop. Just move forward. Okay. Don't quit or give up or worry or anything. And if you're struggling with doubt or fear or anxiety, come to one of us and let, let us pray with you about how to talk you through that. Okay. So, anything else for the good of the cause? <laughs> I love you, Steph. <laughs> oh, Anna, I love you too. I, I just had to tell, I almost wanted to say in the Zoom call last night to everybody Lisa and Anna are so cute and you're cute together. That's what makes you even, you're cute separately, but you're absolutely adorable together. And that's what I loved about you guys. So I think we're going to be spending a lot more time together in the future. So anyway. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, ladies, have a great evening. Uh, probably about every two weeks we'll do a Zoom call, if not every week. Um, I will try to give you more advanced notice in this, but we will be recording all calls from here on out. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, guys. I'm going to stop.